We are in Duties of the Heart, page 435. Uh, we're starting at, uh, now let us take up the sixth group. Okay? That's the easiest place to start because that's where it's going to pick things up. So now let us take up the sixth group, the reward in this world and the next that a person merits by his good deeds in this world. Again, ma'asim tovim uh, are good deeds, if you will, in other words, the positive acts of the Torah. This takes two forms, reward in this world alone, so sometimes it get paid down here, and that's all, that's really it, and sometimes reward in the, world, in the next world alone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a person merits both on account of a single deed. An, exp an example of that would be keep it up aim, honoring your parents, uh, Talmud Torah, uh, if you're learning Torah, all those you get your, you make your um, reward in this world and the, in the next. Okay, carrying it as you say, we say that every every day that these are the uh, these are the things that we eat the fruits in this world, but the the principle uh, is maintained in the next in the world to come, which would be comparable to your retirement fund if you uh, involve yourself in IRA, IRAs, maybe Roth or um, What's the other one? Traditional. Traditional IRA, whatever this is going to be, you're involved in stocks. It's not just a uh, it's not just a bank account. Ah, that you spend and it goes away. Right. So if when you're invested in stocks, which is what most IRAs are built on today, mm -hmm. so then what happens is you take a, uh, a distribution, right? You're taking a, dis a certain distribution every year or however you break up the distributions, but it doesn't touch the principle. Oh, you, oh, you mean uh, after retirement you're talking about? Right, after retirement. Ah. So after retirement, so you're, you build up, let's say yeah, okay. you get, uh, f between everything, between your Social Security, uh, assuming that's still there when, when I get there, <laughs> but Social Security and everything else, so let's say I can pull out 50,000 just to make a, a number, yeah. okay? And that's without touching my principle. Yeah. So now what happens is I continue to draw that money. I'm living the life of Riley, okay? And not, not eating uh, dog food like they showed in the old timers of the uh, 1960s, uh, 1980s, whatever it was. Yeah. But I'm, I'm having my normal thing. I'm living at the, the level I'm used to. And then after 120, I remember I keep drawing money and it does, the principle's never being used. It's like an endowment. Okay, principles have been used. Now, when the day comes that my kids will inherit, they're getting a million dollars because they get the whole, yeah. the whole thing. So as long as the stock market operates properly, mm -hmm. I've turned that whatever X amount of dollars into an amazing amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what's going on. Now, that would be for our understanding. Imagine, though, when you have me doing the mitzvah. And now I'm building up my accounts here, okay? Sometimes I get a dividend from my mitzvot. Sometimes that's, again, uh, honoring your parents and so forth. I get a dividend in this world. I get reward in this world. I get the fruits of, of my labor. At the same time, my principle is not uh, being touched, mm -hmm. and that is what I'll be collecting in the next world to come. So that really is your to making a uh, heavenly IRA. <laughs> The like, beauty of making, compound he, interest. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah, he's not. He, he, he's making. He's making a, gen, a general statement first. So he's, not, he's not specifying what mitzvahs there are at this point. Right. 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 Okay. So like I said, he's saying some of this and some. Saying right. You have two, basically two forms: one the reward in this world, next, and the, and the one in the world, the next yeah. world. Sometimes uh, you get on um, both. So this matter was not explained to us in detail. Ah. Rather, the Creator promised His people general reward for general observance and did not state specific rewards for specific acts of service in this world as He did with regard to punishment for transgression where He states which acts make one liable for stoning, a burning, decapitation, or strangulation, forty lashes, death, the form not expressly stated 
premature death, pre- payment for, of monetary fine, twofold, fourfold, or fivefold payment for damages by an ox, a pit, a beast's teeth, or fire, for wounding another person, uh, seizing his private parts, defamation, and the like. But of the reward and punishment in the next world, the prophet is told there's nothing in his book for several reasons. Now, again, I think I, th- we covered this last week, but I'll just say it one more time. Uh, the reason that Hashem doesn't, possible reason, that Hashem doesn't want to give us a, re- tell us what the reward is for honoring your parents versus uh, putting us fill in, is I may start saying, okay, this one pays more than this, so I'll contrary on that mitzvah, and I won't do this mitzvah, right? Because this is going to get me more than right. that, right? To use the uh-huh. to, to use the, the uh, illustration that Rabbi Linda yeah. used on the meeting, I can either invest in penny stocks that can take my dollar, double my dollar, and get two dollars, yeah. or I can get my hundred dollars, get ten percent, make one hundred and ten dollars. Yeah. I've made more money by that investment, even though in. In stati- my investment, I, I didn't make as much on the investment. In other words, I didn't get my 100% return, got 10% return, but I still made more money. So if I'm going to use that with regard to mitzvot, and I'm going to say, okay, let me see. To steal, I, it cost me, by the way, for, ah. you don't even know what I'm going to, about to say, but you two gentlemen still remember Saturday Night Live, yes? Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. Saturday Night Live? Especially when it was knew it was really and then, especially yeah, when yeah. it was especially when it was, it was funny. Really good. Correct. So there was a character, Rab, uh, Father Faducci or something oh, like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he came out. The, the whole act was. Imagine you have you. If you Google it, you'll see it. But uh, otherwise, you don't know what I'm talking about. Just, just go with the flow. You probably okay. got it on YouTube. Somebody. You, somebody has it. There. But he starts saying, "Can you imagine if we knew what?" what each sin was worth so you look and you say let me see uh it says you can't lie cost me five bucks okay as compared to this one 20. i'll lie four times <laughs> you know that's what that's what they <laughs> right and you know he, he uh they it's a very funny skit to watch but that's how some people would look at it yeah. if i know what it costs so i have to make a decision if it's worthwhile to do it. So that's why he, God doesn't identify what each punishment is. Besides that, by the way, each punishment, the cost, if you will, or the cost of the mitzvah, is going to be dependent upon you. Mm-hmm. In other words, as we say in, in Per Kevot, according to the effort is the reward. If it's not an effort for me not to speak Lashon Hara, or if it's not an effort for me ah. to go to Minyan, it's not an effort for me per se, so I, I enjoy it. So for me to go to Minyan, I'm not going to get the same pay as Plony, Joe Smith, mm-hmm. Plony, <laughs> who doesn't like Minyan. When he has to get up and he has to wake himself up and schlep himself out of the bed in the cold, come to Minion, sit here and torture himself, going to torture himself, okay? <laughs> the amount of award, reward he's building is unbelievable because he didn't want to do it. And yet he said, I have to because Hashem said, I have to do bl- blank. So the same thing, if I don't want to do something hmm. that's commanded of me, but, and I... And I fight with my Yitzhahara, and my Yitzhahara loses. Ah, oh, but think of the rewards you get. By the way, that usually happens with monetary value. Where you have to pay for something. In other words, when I have to pay a little bit of an amount, I have to give Sadaka, right? So I, can, I have in my hand a penny. So I throw my penny in. It's really, there's not such reward to throw the penny in. Okay, on the other hand, for, for a person, I think everybody in this room, to throw a penny or something. But can you imagine the other kid who doesn't even have a penny? Mm. For him to take that penny and to throw it in, it's everything. Mm. So, again, even the domination is what matters. And that's, what he, that's why, again, you can't state the reward because it wouldn't make sense. Mm. You know, I, again, I shouldn't lie, I shouldn't steal, I shouldn't, well, I shouldn't eat. I mean, and the Torah says we're not allowed to eat blood. Oh, drink blood. I mean, okay, right? So Ramban says, Nachmani says, nobody likes blood anyway. Yeah. 
it's a very easy mitzvah to fulfill. Yeah. And imagine we get such a reward for it, all the more so the other stuff. Now, if you listen to a doctor, I'll tell you, and I remember I had a, a Rebbe who, who knew uh, medicine quite well, and he said, milk is an energy drink. If you drank the milk, you would have instant energy. It's like the four-hour <laughs> shot. Okay, so he said, so if somebody's really tired and they have to stay up, so the easiest thing to be would be to drink blood. He said, that's number one. Number two is, if I want, the ancient belief was if I drink the blood of whichever animal I'm drinking, so then I get their, their uh, what do you call it, their uh, good stuff. So a deer is fast. So if I drink that... So it was thought to be that it may be true, may not be true, but it's tremendous vitamins and blood. So, yeah, it may not be something that I want to do, but imagine if you are that type of, type of person who wants to get that sort of energy for you, it's en quote-unquote enjoyable. Or if you're a boxer, again, this is the old days, uh, the first Rocky, when uh, Rocky was training. So what does he do? He, he, Rocky is Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so he, uh, he took six raw eggs, cracked them, and this is a scene. He cracks them, yeah, and yeah. he drinks in a glass. In the six glass. raw eggs, yeah. six or seven raw eggs, in a glass, and you see him drinking it. And you're thinking, did he get somebody to replace him to do that? <laughs> and, but the whole audience had the same reaction. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. You heard that throughout the whole audience. Yeah. <laughs> Yet, you know, boxers supposedly did that. I don't know if they really? did that. Really? Supposedly. Again, it's an energy drink. So, uh, but all those things were something that we would want to do, but for those guys, you know, they did. Now, if it was a horrible thing for them, to so then the reward is equal to the, you know, you're equal, you, the payment is equal to the, uh, the tsar, the, the stress you go through. But that's how you have to look at it, okay? So it says... Hello, I, I have a book for you. I had faith that you would show up. <laughs> You're welcome. Hi, yeah. It's also refreshingly, further than just animal blood, people would drink other people's blood. Like, for the village, uh, I don't know if it's Africa or Asia, but if you would kill, if you were to become the new leader, you would, the, the head tribe person would die of old age or get killed. And whoever yeah. replaces him takes that and drinks it. So he gets the strength of leadership. Okay. Same sort, of, same sort of thing. But human blood it was not prohibited by uh, Torah. No, no, animal no. blood was. So, but, so we have to look at that. Obviously, we shouldn't have human blood because that is disgusting. And it's an, we're not allowed to make ourselves an abomination uh, before God. But at the same time, if I remember correctly, human blood was not because people don't eat people. So there would never be a, yeah, yeah. an instance of that. And uh, religion, you have re cannibals. Have can I'm just saying, in the Torah, as far as the Torah is concerned, yeah. it wasn't normal to eat yeah. humans. Yeah. So they were saying when you kill an, when you kill certain animals, all animals actually, yeah. you weren't allowed to eat so the was blood. That, that was like a, a pagan practice or something? Could have been a pagan. It, could have, it probably was pagan. But it's, uh, again, it was something that most people don't like to do. Uh, most people don't drink blood. Yeah. That's what Rambam was arguing. Yeah. You want to argue the other way, because it's It doesn't bother me. But I'm just saying, Ramban says it, is, it was such an easy, at one point, I'm looking at effort. It was such an easy mitzvah not to do, yeah. to, to fulfill, as it were, yeah, that there's no, right. there's what, and yet we get great reward, kol v'chomer, how much more so, yeah. the other stuff which is difficult yeah. to do. Say it again, please. You walk by somebody's garden and you don't pick a flower. That's also correct. That's, it's, one of those. it's one of those things that you wouldn't think of doing, yet you fulfill the mitzvah of don't stealing. Yeah. Correct. And look at the rewards you get. That would be one of his examples. Right. Okay? Most people don't want to pick the flower because they understand the stealing. Uh, he, he says that the, the, that the, the prophet told us nothing uh, in his book. Is, is that Moshe Rabbeinu? Who's he talking about, the prophet? It could be Moshe. It could be in general prophets. Ah. It could be the one. He doesn't. The one thing about this is sometimes he doesn't identify who he's referring to. 
So, uh, so okay, now let's go on. One of these is the form, again, this is reward and punishment in the, in the hereafter. So one of these is that the form of the soul apart from the body is unknown to us. Still less do we know about what delight, what brings a delight in that, in that state or causes it to suffer. Talking about just the soul without the body. He, Hashem did, however, explain this to those who could understand this meaning, as he said to, to Joshua, Joshua, I will let you walk among those who stand here. That's, uh, to Zich that's in Zechariah. That was not to be while his soul was still joined to his body, but was an allusion to the state after death when the soul, in its simple and refined condition, divested of the body and no longer using it, assumes the form of the angels, if it was purified and radiant and his deeds were good in this world. So that's why you really want to do it proper, uh, because if you do, so then your neshama becomes like an angel, as it were. Mm -hmm. Another reason is that the doctrine of reward and punishment in the world to come was received by the common people from the prophets in the form of old tradition and was grasped by the wise, uh, through their intellectual faculties. Mm -hmm. They therefore did not mention it in scriptures just as they did not mention much of the exposition of the commitments and, du and duties because they relied upon tradition. Now this also is something, if you listen to most people, yeah. uh, they will say in the Jewish world, those who don't like to accept uh, heaven or hell, yeah. they will say, well, if there was such a thing as heaven and hell, why wasn't it mentioned in the Holy Scriptures, in the five books of Moses. There's no mention of it. Therefore, it was a later invention of the rabbis. That's what they argue. It was a later invention of the rabbis mm -hmm. to uh, probably as in give in to people, you know, the ultimate threat, if you don't do this, you're going to hell sort of thing. And uh, that's what they want to argue. So, uh, uh, so Rabachia Rav, is saying, no, it wasn't that. It wasn't that yeah. it was invented later on. It, the reason it was they relied upon tradition from Sinai to get it across. It was always oral tradition because really what's the mission, what's the, uh, the ultimate thing? We're not here, we're not here in this world to get Gun Aden. Our, that's not our goal. Our goal is to get as close to Hashem here ah. through the mitzvot as possible and not worrying about the reward, which is why it says in Pirkei Avot, you should serve Hashem on as a servant, not on condition of the reward, just because he's, the, he's, your, he's your owner. So since God is... The, when I... When I uh, let's put it the other way. When your kids honor you, it's not to get... It should not be to get something from you. It should be because we owe it to you. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay? So the same way, when we're following Hashem, it shouldn't be for want of yeah. reward, for building up my spiritual bank account, as it were. It should be because Hashem told me to do it. And Hashem would only tell me to do what is best for me. So therefore, I should do it. Out of Hakar Satov, recognition of the good. So, that, so I don't have to dangle in front of you yeah. the uh, this concept of Gan Eden and Gehenna. I don't oh, have so, to. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's again, old tradition. So Gehenna, is it, was it one of the prophets somewhere in one of the later books mentions Gehenna the is, things that burn or something? Yeah, like that, that. that's also in the Torah, the, the gay Hinom. Ah. But it's uh, the valley of Hinom. Yeah. It's where they used to do uh, uh, kid sacrifices. Ah, uh, yeah, so yeah. that's where, and Gan Eden is from the Garden of Eden. So we're yeah, looking yeah. at, ah. we envision heaven to be the idyllic, idyllic garden and we ex and we envision hell it didn't express you say that right didn't express that and we envision hell to yeah. be like burning of the kids yeah. torturous things and so on and so forth now what happens is uh, what happens is we don't know what it is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody's ever gone and come back and said hey guess what <laughs> it's blank okay no i don't know if anybody has anyway but <laughs> yeah. not even Ilya who tells us and it was back and forth a couple of times. And he never said to us, I have to tell you, guys, I, I got to tell you, if you do this, this was really, it's such a great thing. Ping pong all day long and, and little golf. Oh, it's great. 
and he never missed a hole. It's always a hole in one. Ooh, ah. No, he never said that. He also didn't say, and they're learning, and they're steiging away. They didn't say that, and they didn't say virgins. They didn't. No, there's nothing like that. We don't have any reports. We have no reports. And he always come back. He comes back and forth. He has, it's, uh, I don't know how he, gets, how he get, keeps going back and forth, but he has it. Okay, he, we don't know. Again, no, so no brochures. No brochures. No <laughs> brochures. And, and by the way, no brochures of Gehenna either. We don't yeah, know what that yeah, looks like. Yeah. But that's but the point that uh, Rabaki is making is, it's via tradition. Yeah. Ah. It's it's the common sense. In other words, it's so important to get. To, I had to get this. I had to think of how to get this point. Certain things I show. I don't have to tell you. It's just understood, right? When I'm, when I'm picking my baby up, my baby, uh, I'm talking about a baby. When I'm picking my baby up, or when my wife picks the baby up, there's no, the, the kid understands when she puts it to the nipple, the kid's supposed to eat, right? It's a natural thing. You don't have to be taught. Guess what? This is body parts, and you have to, you have to suck and blah, blah, blah. We don't have to teach the kids it. It's a natural thing. So also, when I'm and I train the child that whatever I'm doing for you is good. So now, as when as you go on again, I don't have to show you reward. You know, you know implicitly that there's going to be something good out of this. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So also Hashem, we when Hashem created us, He created us in such a manner that it was just a natural result that I'm going to get A, B, and C. You know when it becomes a problem? When, when a person dies, right? We are, suddenly we get a will. Now, some wills are very simple. Split this, stu split this stuff up between the, th the bunch of you, okay? Now, when that happens, how, now this is when we see how everything works. Because if the parents trained the, the children correctly, will there be a fight? Shouldn't be. No fight. There's no fight because dad and mom want us to have this. Boom, split it down the middle, leave me alone, pay off the expenses, done. If the parents didn't bring the kids up right, now it's some argument. Who gets this? Who gets that? And in the end, you end up lawyers and nothing is done. You, you end up hating each other, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really what we're talking about here. If I need to write it down, that this is what you're going to get, it means you didn't get the message. And that's sometimes, and you know, when did this happen, by the way? With the Aaron of Kohen. Aaron of Kohen had to be given the priesthood with, the, with many different signs. And you had, you had to, many times Hashem said, I'm only doing this because people, uh, people will argue on you. So I'm now writing it down. But it should have been common sense. Sometimes common sense doesn't work. So that's the same thing with, with reward and punishment, Rabbi Bakhi is saying. When the Torah was given, it was common sense. You're going, if you did right, you get reward. If you did wrong, you get punished. But then it had to be written, written down after, after, after people started to deny it. And why they deny it? Because it was written down. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's counterintuitive after all. So another reason is that people were in a state of ignorance and deficiency of understanding, which is not hidden in the spiritual account. The Creator acted toward them as a sensitive father would act toward his little child when he wants to train him gently step by step, as it is written, Israel was a child and I loved him. When a father wants to teach his young child wisdom, which ultimately will enable him to ascend to the higher levels, but which he cannot presently understand if he tries to induce the child by by, to learn by saying, endure the strain of discipline and in instruction, so that when, so that through them you may ascend to the esteemed levels, the child will be unable to bear it and will not listen because he does not understand it. Right? If you tell the kid, oh, you, you just you got to go through it. You know, everybody does. By the way, you know who does this? Conservative and reformed Jews. Oh. Bar mitzvah lessons. Oh. They, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah lessons, it is probably, well, besides Hebrew school, the 
biggest thing that turns kids off. Oh. Am I right? Am I right? Because what happens, you go to the to whoever is teaching, whomever is teaching you, and you don't know what to say. You're just mumbling the words. Actually, you're not mumbling, you're actually saying the words. And you're going to perform, you train yourself six, sometimes six months, sometimes a year, to get everything down. It doesn't have to be a whole laning, it could be a haftorah. It could be anything. What we would do in five minutes, it takes a long time to teach the kids. And they they drill them, and they drill them, and they drill them. Then the kid has to go up, again, male or female, in the conservative world. And they perform, and they get paid for it. Okay, But all the way through, they're saying, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. And the parents, and I heard parents say this, they said, yeah, we hated it too, but you got to do it. We hated it too, but you have to do it. What kind of lesson is that? My God, are you crazy? Lie! <laughs> Why do you tell your kids, we hate it too, but you have to do this. That's Yiddishkeit. So what happened, by the way? The next generation, in other words, my kids, my generation <coughs> didn't train their kids. As a matter of fact, they didn't marry Jews. Yeah. They said, I don't want this torture. Forget the old timers. Leave me alone. And then if they would marry Jews, then sometimes they would have the bar mitzvah, sometimes not. The former people would, the non from wouldn't, you know, from conservative, so on and so forth. But they never trained them to say this is important. And that's the point. It was never something that, you know, you just just deal with it. <sighs> like we tell our kids when they go to school. Yeah. Just listen to the teacher, write it down, and don't worry about it. And forget it after the test. Leave me yeah. alone. Yeah. It's stupidity. We're destroying the children. We're destroying education with this. Yeah. But that's what we do. And I do it myself. I say, don't worry about it. Just, just do what you have to do. That, but does it help? No. My father on the end took this approach. He said, but if the father promises him things that bring him immediate pleasure, that's my father said. It wasn't immediate, but such as food or drink, attractive clothing, a nice wagon, today, today update this, a car, a nice bike, and the like, and threatens him with immediate discomfort, such as hunger, and I wouldn't advise that nakedness again, spanking and the like, while reassuring him with uh, convincing tangible arguments and clear and truthful evidence, it will be easier for him to endure the strain of discipline and bear it with his difficulty. Okay, so my father, in order for us to get good grades, again, you have to update the price these days, but he said, if you get all A's and B's, if you get A's and B's, I'll give you $3. If you get all A's, I'll give you 5 When we went to college, he upped the, uh, the price to $50. If we can get all A's in his college, mind you, he's still bribing us in college to get all A's. And so $50. Again, you'd have to update that. I'm talking about years ago and uh, whatever that is. But how many of us have tempted our kids with, if you get this, I'll give you, it's what we call the incentive programs. Yeah, yeah. Every You had the incentive program with uh, bringing them to Chicago. And uh, we all do it. We have the, we sell the ice creams. We sell everything. The incentive programs. And he's saying, that's the way to do it. Huh. That's the way to do it. Sometimes you have to give the incentive. And when you have to give the incentive, I know a person who the kid was not going to Minion. Religious kid. Wasn't going to Minion all the time. You know, wasn't waking up on time. So the mother said to the child. You're talking about a young teenager. Yeah. So the mother said to the child. I will get a 13 year old, a 13, 13 and a half, whatever. I will pay you a dollar a day to go to Minion. Again, the dollar a day in those days was something. So the kid, oh, a dollar a day, wow. <laughs> he would go every morning. Finally, it took him about three months. He said to his mother, keep the money. He wow. finally woke up to the reality of, wow. I'm supposed to be doing this. Realized it was a he part. realized he was supposed to do it. And so he took it upon himself to go to Minion and wow. he told his mother, thank you. Wow. But, you know, but again, it was worth it to the mother in her mind to spend $30 a month, $30 a month to go. And that's what you need to, that's your incentive to, to again, update whatever the price would be today. How much would it be worth for you wow. to have your child do blank? So in other words, uh, he's saying uh, if a, a younger child is, is, is yeah, but somewhere between that age of 8 to 13, something like that, uh, is, is not mature enough to grasp it, then you need to incentivize them. 
I would say that applies even to a man of your age. <laughs> I'm serious. It's necessary, in other words. Right, whatever it, right. whatever, whatever it takes. We, we, it's an expression, lolishma, bolishma. You're not doing it for the sake of heaven, you all, but you're doing it, you'll come to do it for oh, the sake okay. of heaven. So okay. if I incentivize it, if I say, okay, come, come to the Torah center, and we're having a Shabbaton, and just come for the meal. Yeah. Just come for the meal. Uh, it was a cost. For you, it costs nothing. I want you, I'm, you're my guest, come to my meal, okay? That person now comes to the meal, is enthralled by Judaism, and will he pay the second time? No, he won't. It may take you a couple of years, but finally he's going to say, you know what, I don't need the incentive anymore, thank you. But it was fun while it lasted, but either I'll pay or I'll whatever. You know, th that's something else. But, uh, or I'm just, I'm coming now on a daily basis, I don't need that part of Kirif. But that that's really what it is. I have to you should we do incentivize. When what's the first thing we do when our kid turns with the up share uh, three years old? The boy. What do you do with oh. the boy? Besides giving him the haircut? The, the, the sitter with the, you give him the sitter and you put honey uh, on it. Mm -hmm. You put honey so oh, sweet. That's right. Hebrew Judaism is sweet. You want to teach him that so he wants to open he want it's not a matter of hey, do it now. <laughs> no, it's sweet, it's beautiful, it's a wonderful thing. That's why what do you have on Shabbos? What how do you remember your, your kids can't do anything, but they can't go on the internet, they can't uh, watch TV, they can't run with their friends, and so on and so forth. They can't play basketball. All the Mishagasin that we, uh, that you know, if you don't have an Arab that you can't do. What do we give these kids every single Shabbos? A Shabbos party. Ah. You have a Shabbos party. And what does a Shabbos party entail? All the sweets in the world. <laughs> oh, wonderful stuff. They know on Shabbos. They can go crazy, have soda. They can have uh, the, the, the Twizzlers. They, it's a, it's a corn, uh, cornucopia, cornucopia. cornucopia yeah. of, of, of delicious foods. Who wouldn't want that? I remember when I was in Bangor, they, my wife, again, we were, how many Jews were in Bangor already? It's certainly from Jews. We had ten, ten, uh, nine Shomer Shabbos families there. We never have a minion. But we had around nine, but they, we weren't all living in the same neighborhood. It wasn't like here. Okay, uh, yeah, we're all living in the same neighborhood. Baruch Hashem, <laughs> they were turned very Jewish. So now you have kids. It looks like Borough Park here. You're there on Shabbos. The, the kids are walking back and forth and running around. Keep out. It's wonderful. But in Bangor, we didn't have that. In Bangor, we had, for the most part, all non-Jews around us. My wife wanted to make, remember, we're homeschoolers. My wife wanted to make a very special Shabbos, and she grew up with Shabbos parties herself anyway. So she made Shabbos parties. And what happened? We had the non-Jewish kids next door, and they and my daughter would say uh, Shabbos, so they, she would say to whoever the names were, I forget the names already, uh, okay, I have to go for my Shabbos party. Do you want to join us? Oh. And the kids said, what's a Shabbos party? And my daughter would say, you don't know Shabbos? <laughs> Like, she's not true. I, she said, no, you come to my house. And she, then she said, Ema, can she come to the Shabbos party? Yeah, sure. The kids would see all this kid. It was like, I want to be Jewish. Right, <laughs> right. I want to be Jewish. <laughs> Mommy, why can't we have Shabbos parties? But think about that. That's my kids, Baruch Hashem, have a good feeling for Shabbos. Mm. To this very day. They, uh, you know, they still look forward to the donuts. They still look forward to the stuff. Me and my stomach won't take it. I don't know how they can do it, Baruch Hashem, they can do it. But it's something that, that's incentivizing. Now, do my kids, my older kids need it? Hopefully not at this <laughs> juncture, but do they still in, imbibe it? I'm sure they will. They'll carry that forward. Though. Yeah, of course. And they have kids. They'll, their kids will... <laughs> Uh, it's like we say, no calories on Shabbos and the, the whole thing. But it's, uh, but that's really what he's saying. Sometimes you have to do that. You you have to know what the age yeah. is. If the if the child can take uh, no pain, no gain sort of philosophy, so then fine. You, you know, you know, when you're working out, is we the expression is no pain, no gain. If you don't if you don't feel the burn, well, it's no good. By the way, the bill, uh, just for our. Uh, correct states uh, the the exercise rule doesn't believe that anymore really? yeah they don't say that because when you're burning 
they argue you're hurting yourself. Ah. So uh, well, you I, certainly overdo it. Yeah. Right. So you have to be careful with that with that statement. But the statement still stands for what I'm trying to say. If it's if a child if the child can understand if the person can understand you have to put your effort in, yeah. uh, otherwise you're not going to get the you won't get the best benefit. So you have to understand what that, that, that for every individual. But imagine if you, but if you can't get that, so I have to say, I have to incentivize it. And that way you're going to grow up. Then you'll start doing it for the right reasons. Uh, That's something yeah, else. Yeah. Okay. When, when you were a teacher and you had the, the, the Torah dollars. dollars. Yeah. That's right. Is, isn't it something in Perkyobo, something uh, similar to that? Yeah, sure. It's all over the place. Uh, uh, it's all over. The, uh, what R Rabachia did was he pulled everything together uh, and, and put yeah. it here. But uh, into a readable, that's what the books of Musa were, by the it's way. Like a digest, uh, in other words. Right. Books. They pulled it together. So instead of pulling from this Gemara and that Gemara, this Mishnah, yeah. that Mishnah, here I'll put it right in front of you. I'll make it easy for you to understand and then and digest, yeah. and you'll you'll have a guide. And this is still the, uh, this type of book, Pashkov, this, uh, this is still being written today, these kinds of books, all over the place. You Not know, as well. Well, ah, well. Not yeah. as well. This is yeah. The, the the books today are. They're more focused on a single subject, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, the books today are not. They're not as powerful oh. as. I mean, that's. These books will last forever. Yeah. The books today won't last forever. No, the books no, today no. are are simplistic in in um, yeah, yeah. in approach, yeah, yeah. and they try to bring in a lot of things that don't belong. Oh. Rabbi Bachia was bringing in Torah constantly. He kept packing himself up in Torah. Yeah. And that's why, again, that's why this one, Mrs. Shisharim, all, all the different, the, all the different Musar. Mm -hmm. the, uh, those books of Musar, ethical, ethical teachings, mm -hmm. they're all so powerful because of how they did it. Mm -hmm. Today, you don't, I don't see anybody doing that today. I think that's, that's gone. Everybody just has their own Mishikas of what they want to do. But, uh, uh, like I said, I would, if I was really trying to get it de developed by Hashkafa, these are the books to go to. And then you have to figure out what really applies today. In our, again, we don't have wagons, a nice wagon. <laughs> That's a, a so you have to, a, a car, bicycle, a bicycle, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. You have to update. That's all. Yeah. Okay. When he reaches adolescence and his mind is matured, he will understand the intended goal of his training and direct himself toward it. While the pleasures for which he has been so eager at the beginning of his way mm -hmm. will appear unimportant to him. Like I said, you grow up. Mm -hmm. Such an upbringing proves to be a great kindness toward him. In other words, you don't start right away with God's going to punch you. You, you start out nicely. Okay. Similarly, the Creator, may he be exalted, held out to his uh, people promises of immediate rewards and threats of immediate punishment, knowing that as soon as they would be trained for his service, their ignorance of reward and punishment in the next world would be banished. Their aim in serving would be for God's sake alone, and they would comply with his service to draw near to him. So there's, there's you go. Hashem is, Rebach is answering his second question here. If God is doing it only for our good, so why does he have to tell us what good and what bad it will be? Because people like incentive programs, and we also like to know what's going to happen. The worst thing you can say to a student in the class is, if you do this, there's going to be serious consequences. The child looks and says, yeah, what are you going to do? I want to know. I want you to tell me what you're going to do. And then, of course, you have to back that up with, with actual action. Because I remember I had a sixth grade when I was teaching, and the principal actually said that. If blank happens, there's going to be serious consequences. And I saw my sixth graders thinking, yeah, no, you're not, you're not going to do anything. Ah, I've, heard that I've heard that before, and it's not happening, so we can do whatever we want. <laughs> And they did. They didn't. Uh, they did, and there was no consequences. They got away with it. Okay. So you have to. But Hashem is saying this is what's going to happen, right? So the same thing can be applied to all passages in the in the scriptures that uh, ascribe corporeal attributes to Hashem. May he be exalted. And another reason is that a person does not become worthy of reward in the world to come on the strength of his good deeds alone. Rather, in addition to these, there are two factors that qualify him for such reward from Hashem. The first is that he enlighten others in the service of the Creator may be exalted and teach them proper conduct as is written. And those who turn the many to the righteous shall shine like the stars forever and ever. 
uh, those, so that's a, a shout out to all the Kiruv rookers in the world oh. and all the rabbis to say it's not enough for you to be a tzaddik. You can't be like a Noah to be a tzaddik in pelts. You have to go, like be an Avram, go out and try to help the rest of the world. For he who reproves, their, uh, for those who reprove, there will be delight and the good blessing will come upon them. Again, when you're reproving somebody, this is a very dangerous thing. You can turn a lot of people off. You need to know what to do. The best thing to do is to compliment. That's the way the world is today. As they, the, the expression is, catch them while they're doing good. Don't, it's really easy to tell somebody what they shouldn't be doing, but when you catch them being good, yeah, yeah. then it has a much more powerful uh, musser. And, that, and you forget, and by the way, if I keep, what does every person want? Attention. It's all you want. Now, you'll either get it negatively or positively. If I ignore your negative actions and I compliment you positive, remember, all you want is me to pay attention to you. So you're going, and you see I'm not responding to the negative I only respond to the positive so you're going to do that my I remember one of my kids actually probably all three of them at one time in their life they all uh, melt there was what we call a meltdown and they have what they call it in reality when they kick their feet oh, um, a tantrum yeah. tantrum yeah. the tantrum I, I remember my wife just looked at him and said <laughs> when you finish Tommy well, know when, <laughs> when you finish Tommy and they saw they didn't get anything from that so that it was, it was over. Yeah. It was over. They just didn't do it. You have other kids who take tantrums and their parents, stop, stop. You know, it's the old joke of, uh, there was, uh, I forget which rabbi says, I think it's, who's, your, who's the rabbi from Asia? Uh, uh, not Asia, what's um, Gateways with the, not Rieti, the other one. I don't know. Who? Pat. Pat. Okay. No, not this. Well, it's one of the, it's not him. It's the other guy. I forget. But he said he was with his child and he went to, he was going shopping, you know, in uh, the supermarket. And he came to the Isle of Temptation, which is, I'm checking out the candy, right? Oh. And so, Isle of Temptation. And the child said, my child said to me, Abba, or Tati, whatever you call him, Abba, I'd like to get this candy. And, of course, I knew that the child couldn't have the candy because we're going home for supper. So my child looked at me and said, Alvin, we can do this the easy way, or we can do this the hard way. <laughs> the easy way is, you buy the candy. The hard way is, you say, no. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to scream. I'm going to cry. And you're going to say, shush, 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 shush. And then you're going to buy it anyway. So we can do this the easy way or the hard way. We negotiate. Right. It was, no, he said that. <laughs> so then I, I looked at the candy and I said to my son, Sadik, I'm sorry, it's not kosher. Okay. That was the end of it. That was the end of it. He said to me, what have I argued? But to Hashem, it's not kosher. It's not kosher. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> Nothing worth arguing about. That's the same thing here. Again, how do I train my kids? How do I train them? Do I, call, do I catch them being good? Do I have the negotiation? Do I say a hard way to go? Or, you know, how do I do that? So that's what he's re revealing here. Okay. Um, so that's when light writes. So the, uh, There's a lot of attitude because success follows success. So right. So you have yeah. to find the, a point that they can succeed. Correct. That's why failure failed. Right. Failure. Right. So he kept me good. So the first is to enlighten. Like I said the first is that he enlightened others. I said that I'm sorry. Uh, and then for the uh, when the upright individual has acquired the merit of promoting righteousness in others, together with the merit of his own righteousness and the merit of the faith of his faith and patient submission, he will be considered by the Creator worthy of receiving the reward of the world to come. Uh, the second condition is God's grace uh, generosity and goodness as is written grace O god is yours in that you reward a man according to his work the reason for this is that even if a man's being good if a, if a human being's good deeds were as numerous as the sands of the sea they still would not be equal to even one of the favors bestowed upon him by the creator may be exalted in this world all the more so if he committed a sin so if the creator were to hold a man strictly 
on to account in demanding gratitude for these favors, all his good deeds will be neutralized and erased by the smallest of the Creator's favors toward him. Any reward bestowed upon him by the Creator is not deserved on account of his deeds, but as a result of Hashem's grace toward him. Punishment, however, in this world and the next is justly reserved, a debt that man must pay only that God's grace over, overcomes it in both worlds, as is written, grace of God is yours. But he, the compassionate, would grant atonement for sin and would not destroy. It's, this is a very important thing to recognize, that we will be, the punishments that we're going to get, that's on us. We earn our punishments. That we get. Our reward we don't earn. Our reward is a grace. Which is also something that's very foreign in this in this in our world today. Yeah. We think that of again as an employee, I say I go to work, I do my job, you the employer owe me money. Simple as it. If I don't come to work, I don't get paid. I understand that. If I don't do the job, I get fired. I understand that too, right? But there's a quid pro quo here. It's not like I go to work and I say, oh no no, you you, you don't have to pay me. I'm a volunteer today. <laughs> I'm doing it because I love to. I love you. We do that for our parents. That we do. We do it for our parents. We don't do it for the want of reward for our parents. I'll never forget that I, when I grew up. So I mowed the lawn for my father because I would do that. He was working a full day. And I came home. I saw the lawn was, uh, I would just do it because I was a good son. <laughs> Bottom line. I didn't want to see my father doing it. So I would mow the lawn. And so my father said to me, Take you ten dollars, mind, mm -hmm. mind you. I was I was past ten dollars at that point. I was I was in my twenties, and I said, "Dad, it's really not necessary." He said, so that's my father told me, "If somebody offers you money, you take the money. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> take your money," because he didn't want it. He didn't want the feeling that I was doing it for free. The whole voice be holding to me. But I was trying to tell him, "Dad, I can never repay you a mile for what you do." And that's the bottom line. There's no way to repay our parents. So if we can't repay our parents, call the Homer, God, who created us. But if I would do something wrong, then I have to pay for that. Because my parents aren't obligated to pay for my crimes. So that's on me. So that's what Hashem is, that's what he's saying here. When it comes to punishment, that we earn. When it comes to anything else, that's all of God's, uh, what do you call it? Kindness. I'll have to stop here. Yeah.